Good morning, everybody. 33 minutes after the hour. Welcome back to the Sunrise Show. Craig Frone again. Well, uh, Dr. Mark Christian, we just had him on the phone. He'll be right back with us. I don't know what happened with that. Very odd. Maybe he, uh, maybe his phone dropped at the moment. That might be what's happening. Well, be- before we get back in with that, uh, Billboard Awards. Kind of interesting. Uh, last night, what were your, did, you, did anyone tune in on the Billboard Awards? A uh, lot of lot of great music acts. I mean, of course, uh, Taylor Swift kicked it right off the beginning, and I was just like going, "Wow!" And then she went ahead and introduced Van Halen, and there they were, <laughs> just like going, "Are you kidding? Are you kidding me?" I was. I'm thinking to myself, "Talk about a wayback machine." Yeah, it was a wayback machine for sure. Well, uh, Mark, we've got Dr. Mark Christian back with us this morning, so. Uh, I wanted just to talk to uh, Dr. Mark Christian. Uh, good morning, sir. How are you? Good morning. How are you? Well, very good, sir. Very good. Were you surprised uh, related to uh, this U.S. commando attack in East Syria on the top dog for ISIS over there? Um, no, I was not. You know, uh, the battle will continue going on between the United States and, and ISIS. But they are not putting, you know, an end for ISIS. Uh, I don't, I don't see it uh, in the horizon right now because, um, uh, you know, there is multiple reasons and multiple theories for why they continue keeping ISIS on, you know, on the go, not on the run. Um, and they were able to capture the Ramadi uh, the other day, you know, they actually, and uh, you know, so I was not surprised. No. Well, right, and then uh, they shot, I got shot and killed. I guess the top leader there, but then they captured his wife along with a bunch of intel. So I think they're, they're kind of like mouse with the cheese off the mousetrap. Now they're going to go back and dissect everything that they've got, because this is, uh, I, I don't know. They do, I mean, they, they've always talked about this on the political realm of needing boots on the ground to get that intel. Uh, you know, that's, that's it, and here they are on the ground. So... They, they Craig, you know, we, we kind of try to think of the top leader and try to make some propaganda about that. Um, you know, uh, to be honest with you, you know, that works over here in the media and, and, and try to be very sensational to people, but it doesn't really work on the ground as much somebody from coming from the other side and growing up in Egypt and understanding the tactics and the way of those organizations works very well. You know, you, you have to understand it's not about one person or one leader. It's right. about an ideology and about a group of people working all together. And one person is gone, thousands is going to come up in his place, the same with Osama bin Laden or anybody else. It is not about one person, you know, that we are worried about. What, I should, we should, what we should pay attention to uh, is what's going on in Iraq and how they are taking over, you know, a big place like the Ramadi and, and, and how they are controlling that and how it's an empty city and raising the flags of more, uh, you know, cities and more crucial and more, uh, you know, logistic and, 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 all, and, and the, the tons of weapons that they were already uh, captured in Ramadi, ISIS did. Uh, just yesterday. Yeah. Those are the things that we need to pay attention to. Well, the stuff about, you know, we got a whole bunch of intelligent information from a top leader of, of ISIS and Syria and stuff like that. This is all baloney, to be honest with you. And I'm sorry to break it to you. I'm sorry to be a party pooper. But <laughs> the reality of things, no, there is no one person has the stuff in their hands. And there is nothing intelligent that we need from those guys whatsoever in capturing his wives. Nothing is going to come out of that. Interesting. Well, no, I appreciate your... your uh your viewpoint on that very much so because I wonder because I've always asked well you get the top dog aren't they've got other people around them that will immediately slide into position um, I don't know where that really makes much difference kind of what you're saying I mean yeah it makes a little bit of difference it might delay them by a little bit 
But but this Ramadi, talk about this Ramadi. How big is the city of Ramadi? Uh, it's 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 very crucial uh, when they captured that city. It's 80 miles away from Baghdad. Uh, you know, you, you, we talked about the movie, the the sniper, American sniper, and he was the guy who was running Ramadi and killing all the terrorists over there. And there is lots of Americans sacrificed their life uh, to to build that city back after Saddam Hussein and to clean it, cleanse it out from all the terrorists and stuff like that. And all of a sudden, all of those lives has went in vain because, you know, it's under the hands of the top terrorists in, in the world right now, ISIS. That's by itself says a lot, okay? The other thing is there is a huge big uh, pile of weapons and, uh, you know, and a storage area for weapons and also, you know, many of other logistic materials that right now are in the hands of uh, ISIS and just happened yesterday. You know, the Iraqis start running away and leaving the city empty for all of those ISIS fighters to come in. And at the same time, tons of refugees run out of the city to find, you know, safe haven under the American camps and stuff like that. And they will find their way in the United States of America very soon as well. And you have on the other side the Shia trying to build like thousand or a couple of thousand fighters to go fight ISIS while the whole Ramadi area is a Sunni, Sunni city. So whoever left over there and ISIS over there, they're going to find alongside each other to fight those militia that's coming in. So it's, it's a chaos. Yeah, Shia it's, against it's, Sunni, ISIS against, you know, uh, Americans, and, and it's just a chaos. You know, I, I, I know it. I mean, I'm just kind of wondering what in the world, I and mean, with this, these weapons over in Ramadi, this is the next thing is you're kind of scratching your head thinking, what's Iraq and what are the countries around Iraq thinking uh, and how are they going to solve this issue, uh, or do they even care? Look, look at it this way, okay? Forget about the small events that's happening. You have to look about it this way, okay? There is three reasons ISIS exists. ISIS exists to destroy Assad and get him out of power in Syria. Uh, ISIS exists so they can make all the old regimes that is controlling the Middle East for quite some time a failure on a regular basis and show that they are not able to control the countries anymore. And this is the second reason. And the third reason, which is the most important, to bring ISIS exists, to bring the fight back to the United States and the West so they can feel the pressure over here to support the agenda of, you know, many people so they can go and help the Muslim Brotherhood or the Islamists control the Middle East again. And this is maybe, uh, you know, longer and very hard to, to, uh, to digest. So I'm going to say it again. The third reason ISIS exists is to make the West under the pressure of the, of the atrocities that's happening in the Middle East and always push up, uh, making uh, a push button for them so they can intervene and support the leaders that want to intervene in the Middle East. Well, that's, that's amazing. Mark, and perfect timing. We have a break we've got to get to, but this is amazing information you're talking about, and it's, it's fascinating. And everyone, I hope you heard what Dr. Mark Christian just said. We're going to cover that again when we come back. Quick break, and then we'll, we'll come back. Dr. Mark Christian with the Global Faith Institute. Get to his website. Check it out, globalfaithinstitute.org. You'll be glad you did. And they are um, in the middle of a fundraiser, and we'll talk about that as well. So... The Sunrise Show on News Radio 880 KCMX. We'll be back after this quick break. everybody 46 minutes after the hour welcome back to the sunrise show craig from again is your host and on the phone with me dr mark christian and for all of, all of you that don't know dr mark christian is the executive director and founder of the global faith institute uh, globalfaithinstitute.org is the website and uh I'm so I'm impressed dr mark christian at OBGYN by trade but he worked at the el madai medical center in cairo grew up born and raised in egypt and then came to america and is a born-again christian and uh, realized the disconnect between uh, the Western United, United States, the West, and uh, what's going on, 
and how Muslims are the first victims to uh, Islam and how they're affecting America. And America's got to come together. And Dr. Mark Christian, it's great to have you on the program this morning. Thank you very much to, um, for having me. It's an honor to be on your show, Greg. So we talked about fundraising for Global Faith Institute, but I want to ask you one question. Uh, President Morsi was just convicted this last week to death. <laughs> he was sentenced yeah, to death. Yeah, they gave him a death sentence because he broke out of jail. You know, um, the, president, the current president of Egypt, who is a military personnel, I get to know him personally uh, in my time in Egypt, um, He's trying his best to get rid of the Muslim Brotherhood and sack them completely out of power and out of control and out of any influence in Egypt so he can take back the control of Egypt uh, to the military as it has been for the last 60-something years. And, um, you know, unfortunately, you know, the, the giant is out of the bottle, uh, you know, and the Muslim Brotherhood is not able to be contained anymore in the borders of uh, uh, Egypt. And, and what he's trying to do, he's trying his best, and I hope he will be successful to be able to get the Muslim Brotherhood out of power completely. But unfortunately, the power of the Muslim Brotherhood right now is in the West, is in America and in the West, uh, in Europe in general. And, and this is why I see whatever he tries to do is not going to be able to be 100% successful. Um, it will be successful for a, for, a, for a quiet time, but not for long. Yeah, and so I wonder, Egypt, is that healthy for the country? I mean, they move forward, they've got a military power now, so... No, no, it's not healthy for, you know, I don't see it healthy for the country whatsoever. The country is going into, uh, you know, chaos every day, and, uh, and it's not even a good tactic to fight the Muslim Brotherhood. You know, in the, in the free market of ideas, you're not going to be able to kill an idea with a bullet or sword or a... Uh, lethal uh, drug, you know, the, the, the only way to destroy the Muslim Brotherhood is to, uh, you know, um, oppose them in the market of ideas and, and, and to explain that their ideas are 7th century ideas cannot work and cannot function in this time that we live in, and they have to forget about that political Islam that they are pushing because it's not going to work and it's going to be an ultimate failure and the freedom of the people and the freedom of Christ, to be honest with you, is the yeah. only way to succeed. But until they realize that, it's going to take some time. So I don't support uh, what uh, President Sisi is doing, and I do not support the Muslim Brotherhood. Both of them are wrong. Both of them are not doing good for you know, uh, their own country or the world in, in general. So uh, what General Sisi is doing is not going to be successful, and it is far from being su successful to destroy the Muslim Brotherhood. Yeah, the whole Egyptian process over there, and, and of course the Egyptian people, they're left out there to hang. Uh, you know, uh, Dr. Christian, it's amazing um, what's going on in America, and they call us the East, uh, they call the West, they call the United States the Great Satan. And, and I don't know if people hear that enough, People, American citizens hear that about the hate speech. And this is the most profound thing. And, Mark, it's great to have you be a believer and a born-again Christian. But you were raised in Egypt, and you heard firsthand that hate speech toward but Americans. You know, it's, it's a very weird situation, Greg, that confuses lots of Americans when they visit the Middle East. They hear in the streets that people say America is a great Satan. And this is true, by the way, from the Islamists and from the progressive peaceful Muslims equally. Everybody says they hate America, but when they come to the reality of things, every one of them it wants to take advantage of America. And this is what's confusing to people because, you know, many Americans go and visit Egypt or the Middle East in general and they say, you know, people love America. And, and they do. And at the same time, the same person that uh, say is we love America, they go out in the streets and say we hate America, America is the great Satan. So it is confusing. It is a very like kind of a love-hate relationship between America. They know that America is successful and they hate its success, but they yet want to take advantage of it. And this is the core of things. They hate the success of America. They hate what America stands for of liberty and freedom and justice. And, and at the same time, they hate the success that they see uh, that America is accomplishing and with its goal goes against everything that they hold dear in their heart, including their own religion and their own political agenda and so forth. So, and this is why it is just very interesting to deal with it. It is, and free trade is one thing, but then, of course, 
personal rights of, of women, uh, that's the next thing that I think, I wish Americans could grab a hold of that and realize that it's so oppressive. Uh, oppressive is just a very benign word to talk about how women is treated in the Middle East in Islam. You know, I always say that, and I would never get tired of it. Muslims are the very first victims of Islam, you know, and we should not, you know, fight Muslims, but we should uh, fight the ideology of Islam itself. Muslims are just people try to make it in life, and they happen to be Muslims. Uh, they are, like, addicted to a, a, a lethal drug called Islam. But even Muslims are the very first victim, victims of Islam. Women are the most victims oh, of Islam, goodness, because yeah. women... Uh, in Islam are treated horribly, no freedom, no justice, no equality whatsoever under Islam. And there's lots of women over here that will say, you know, you're wrong, Mark, you know, you know, we have our freedom through Islam and stuff like that. And, and they are lying to you up in your face and lying to me in my face because they know exactly what Islam teaches about women. And if they got any freedom right now, it's coming from the Bible and coming from the West and the influence of the West on Muslim mind but it is nothing coming from Islam whatsoever, and still all the freedom that they enjoy right now is conditional and can be taken away in a second if Islam starts becoming the law of the land. Well, that's exactly right, and, and that's why it makes it so powerful that the Global Faith Institute is what it is and is doing what it's doing, and you're changing lives. You're based out of Nebraska, but ladies and gentlemen, globalfaithinstitute.org is the website. Uh, get on the website and check it out. There's so much information. Mark has written a number of books, and they're fantastic. And um, Mark, is there's a book just... uh, that uh, you know I want to highlight today, since you are talking about women. I my, I wrote a small booklet uh, called Women in Islam. I encourage people to go to the website and order one of those books. It's cheap to get. It's very small and easy read. Uh, questions and answers, but you get you lots of information about how women are treated in Islam and where they are getting their freedom that they enjoy right now. Yeah, it's excellent. And, and, you know, Mark, we could have an entire show just on the atrocities of women. And we've actually done it, but we need to do it again. So maybe this next week we'll do that. I would love that. All right, good deal. Ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Mark Christen, the founder of a Global Faith Institute. Uh, you can get to the website, globalfaithinstitute.org. And, Mark, it's always a pleasure. Stay safe this week, and we will talk to you next week on the Sunrise Show. All right. Take have care, Mark. Week. All right, bye-bye. We got to get to a break. More on the Sunrise Show. Nick Smith is coming up with Healthy Forest, Healthy Communities. We'll be talking about him and what's going on with the BLM and their management plan falling fall short of the harvest. Back on the Sunrise Show on News Radio 880 KCMX.